How's it going Guardians? Shifty here and today I'm back with another Destiny 2 build video. So far I've made Agar Scepter build videos for Warlocks and Hunters. Well on those two videos I had some requests to do the same for a Titan. So that is what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be showcasing an Agar Scepter and Stasis Titan build. Before I move forward with the video I do want to mention that the Titan Stasis build with the Agar Scepter is not nearly as effective as the build for Warlocks or Hunters. With that said, I was able to put something together that worked in a similar manner. But before I get into it, if you end up enjoying the video, make sure to hit that like button and if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe as well. Alright to start things off, I'm going to be going over my stasis setup. So for my grenade, I have the Glacier Grenade. Then for my aspects, I have Cryoclasm and I also have Tectonic Harvest. Cryoclasm will be used to shatter my Glacier Grenade and Tectonic Harvest will make it so shattering my Glacier Grenade will spawn a Stasis Shard. It will actually spawn multiple Stasis Shards. Then for my Fragments, there is a little bit of room to work with here, but I chose Whisper of Fissures. This increases the damage and size of the Burst of Stasis when you destroy a Stasis Crystal or defeat a Frozen Target. As I mentioned in a previous video, this does work with any enemies frozen by Agar's Scepter. Next up I have Whisper of Bonds because the whole build is centered around having super energy and making Agar's Scepter last longer, so this makes it so defeating frozen targets grants me super energy. And lastly I have Whisper of Shards so shattering a stasis crystal temporarily boosts my grenade recharge rate. Shattering additional stasis crystals will increase the duration of that benefit. So as you can see this build does focus on getting super energy for the catalyst on Agar's Scepter. But it is also centered on shattering that Glacier Grenade to get improved Grenade Recharge Rate and to spawn Stasis Shards. Next up I want to move on to my Weapon Selection. If you checked out my other two videos you already know that you're going to find Agar's Scepter in my Kinetic Slot. Of course I also recommend having the Catalyst unlock cause this will allow you to melt Barrier Champions. And then in terms of your Energy and Heavy Weapon you have a lot of options to choose from. Currently in my energy slot I have a bow, which can be used for overload champions this season. You could also swap this out for a pulse rifle for unstoppable champions, or an auto rifle for barrier champions. Then in my heavy slot I do have a linear fusion rifle which can also be used on unstoppable champions. Again depending on the activity you're heading into you could swap this out for a sword, a rocket launcher, a grenade launcher, a machine gun, pretty much whatever your favorite heavy weapon is. However, if you're looking to stun champions, a linear fusion rifle is probably your best bet. Next up, I'm going to be going over my armor mods and I'm going to start with my helmet and work my way down. As you can see in my helmet, I have a linear fusion rifle ammo finder. Then in my combat mod slot, I have the well of potency mod. This comes from the seasonal artifact and makes it so picking up a matching elemental well grants you super energy. That means anytime that I pick up a stasis elemental well, I should be gaining some extra super energy. If you haven't figured it out already, this build is going to be using elemental well mods. Next up in my arms you can see I have the unstoppable fusion rifle mod and the overload bow mod. Again these builds can be used in endgame activities so you may want some anti-champion mods. If you're heading into general play you could always swap these champion mods out for something else. If you have a pair of stasis gauntlets, grenade kickstart would be a great option. Anyway in my combat mod slot here I have elemental light. This makes it so defeating a combatant with my super spawns an elemental well that matches my subclass type. The only reason I'm currently using this mod is because it's the only mod that I had energy to slot. If you're working with more energy than I have, you could also go with something like Font of Might. Then for my chest armor you can see I have Heart of Inmost Light. Unfortunately the Titan build isn't as good as the one for Warlocks or Hunters. Part of that has to do with the fact that Titans don't really have any exotics that help regain super energy especially on a stasis subclass. So with that in mind I opted to use an exotic that would help me get my other abilities back faster. So the perk on here is called Overflowing Light. It states that using an ability, a grenade, melee or barricade, empowers the other two abilities. Empowered means abilities have faster regen, melees and grenades do more damage and barricades have more hit points. So say I want to get my grenade back sooner so that I can shatter it, I can always pop up a barricade or use my melee ability. That will allow my grenade to regen faster, and therefore I'll have my glacier grenade up quicker and I'll be able to shatter that if I need those stasis shards. And then for armor mods I have a couple of resistance mods here in the middle, and in my combat mod slot I have elemental armaments. This will make it so any aggro scepter kills I get will have a chance to generate a stasis elemental well. Then in my legs I have the fusion scavenger for linear fusion rifle ammo. My elemental well mod here is font of wisdom. 
Anytime I pick up a stasis elemental well, I will gain an increase to my intellect. Overall, it amounts to tier 10 intellect for 30 seconds when I pick up that stasis elemental well. Lastly, in my class item, I have two utility kickstart mods. These make it so whenever I use my Titan Barricade, I regain some of that barricade energy back. And for my elemental well mod here, I have elemental shards. This will make it so those stasis shards I was talking about will count as a stasis elemental well. Whenever I pick those stasis shards up, as long as this mod isn't on cooldown, I'll gain all of the benefits that I get from picking up a stasis elemental well. For this build, that means tier 10 intellect for 30 seconds due to font of wisdom, and a little bit of extra super energy due to well of potency. Alright, now that I've gone over the components of the build, I want to show some gameplay of it in action, and I want to talk a bit more about how to use it. So generally to get your first super for this build, you're probably going to want to shatter one of your glacier grenades and pick up the stasis shard. That will give you tier 10 intellect for 30 seconds, which is especially important if you have low intellect. Also, as long as elemental shards is off cooldown, shattering additional grenades and picking up those stasis shards will extend the duration of that tier 10 intellect and give you some bonus super energy. Aside from that, you're also going to want to take enemies out with Aegir's Scepter. Any frozen opponents you defeat will proc Whisper of Bonds. That gives you additional super energy for defeating frozen targets. Now when you do have full super energy, you're going to want to use it in two circumstances. Either when you know there's going to be quite a few enemies around, or you want to take out a barrier champion. So here I know there's going to be several enemies, so I'm going to go ahead and activate it and take those enemies out. Taking out those frozen enemies will extend the duration of the Aggro Scepter Catalyst. Also, you may have noticed I did shatter a Glacier Grenade to improve my super regen rate. When most of the enemies are cleared out, I deactivate the Catalyst. And you can see my improved ability regeneration is helping me regain my super quite quickly. You can also use your Glacier Grenade to freeze enemies and shatter those enemies by sliding into it. This will also help you get some super energy. As you can see, I activated my Aggro Scepter Catalyst again. I did that because I knew there was going to be a large group of enemies once again. So you want to try to get kills as fast as possible. This will help you keep the Catalyst going. And generally when you clear the area out, you want to turn it off. and it really didn't take all that long for me to get my super back. Also keep in mind you want to pick up any orbs you generate from getting multi-kills with Aggro's Scepter. So in this circumstance I decided to go ahead and use my super since I was getting low on Aggro's Scepter ammo, but it shouldn't take me all that long to get my super back. So I'm about to get my super here, and I know there's going to be quite a few enemies, so I'm going to activate Aggro Scepter again. Another wave of enemies is spawning, and look at all that shatter damage. In addition to that, killing those frozen enemies helped keep my super charged all the way up. So much so that it only took just a couple of kills to be able to reactivate Aggro Scepter. Now for those of you who haven't seen my other video, you can use the Aggro Scepter with its catalyst to take out barrier champions without any anti-barrier rounds. If you do have your super available and you're using Aggro Scepter, all you have to do is empower it and start freezing the barrier champion. It will continually be frozen so it can never actually use its barrier and Aggro Scepter does enough damage to be able to take it out fairly quickly. As you can see, I soloed a barrier champion in the Master Nightfall using only Aggro Scepter, and I still retained almost three quarters of my super energy when I was done. Alright, even though the Titan build isn't quite as effective as the Hunter or Warlock build, I still think it's going to be quite fun to use, and it's going to be viable in endgame content. Anyway, that's all I have for today's build video. I hope that you enjoyed it, and if you did, remember to like and subscribe. I just want to thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.